Welcome to Arise Shine. We're so glad you've joined us again today. And you know, today is a day to celebrate. Today is a day to praise the Lord. You know, with what took place on Friday with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, that, that was a curse broken over our country of 50 years. What a glorious day to celebrate and rejoice and yet continue to pray and intercede for the 50 states. And also even for the, the coach that was vindicated um, by the Supreme Court. You know, these, these are answers to prayer. Long, long years, decades of prayer, thousands of prayers. But I also felt when I woke up this morning that it was just like a kind of a weightiness on me to just praise the Lord. To, he delights in our praises. He delights in, in our rejoicing over him and his goodness and his faithfulness and it's so easy to get caught up in the circumstances in our in our situations things personally you know in our loved ones lives and in 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 the nation and in all all different things it's easy to get caught up in that and that's where the enemy wants us to stay and focus but when we lift our eyes to him and praise him in the midst of those hard things victory, freedom, breakthrough. And I just felt that this morning, just that. And then as I read something this morning, it just felt like the Lord was again speaking to me, and I believe he's speaking to all of us. I'm going to read this because I just it is his heart, it is his voice for us this day. Every day I believe, but this day. So grab hold of this. As it says in Psalm 34, it says, I'm boasting of you and all your works, so let all who are discouraged take heart. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. Let's make his name glorious to all. And he says to all of us today, he says, Today is a new day. It is the day I created, a day filled with endless possibilities, a day for you to lift your head and remember who I am. Now is the perfect time to shake off that heaviness and clothe yourself with a garment of praise. Tell weariness to flee. Resist the urge to ignore my instructions as if they are words that hold no true answer. This is the answer you need today. I've seen the way you've struggled and made every effort to force things to happen in your timing. I want you to trust me for the perfection of mine. I know what you need. I understand the plan for your life in ways you can't even imagine. Will you trust me? Will you believe me and stop trying to figure it out? All I want today is your offering of praise. Sing, rejoice, dance on the head of your problem. Amen? Declare my victory before the victory even happens. Get excited about what I'm doing because I am doing far more than you know. Yeah. Celebrate my faithfulness for this is what being a believer is all about. Celebrate his faithfulness. And that is what we get to do every day. Every day we invite him in to our lives, invite him into our every day and just worship him and praise him and give him honor and glory that's due his name. And that is how he shows himself through us. His glory is made known through us, through that desire, that intentionality of worshiping and praising his name. It says, gaze upon him, join your life with his and joy will come. That's our praises draws heaven. Our worship draws him and the joy that he is. It says your faces will glisten with glory. Mm -hmm. That is the desire of my heart. That as I just give him all in all the yuck and all the good, everything, we give him all and praise him and his glory so shines that it glistens. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> And so I just encourage um, you today and, and grab hold of celebration today. Grab hold of praise and rejoicing today. And as we come into conversation together to process the tr these truths 
and how we live them out in our everyday life, praising him, giving him glory, trusting him and leaning into him. Um, we welcome you into, into our conversation. We invite you in and, and hit share and others can join us in our conversation as well. I'm Rebecca Ballard. I'm Mary Gallanter. I'm Kathy Hollanday. I'm Barb Melroy. And again, um, we are talking about prayer as we've been for the last couple of weeks. Although I do want to also add to our celebration that Barb's daughter just had a little baby boy. So another grandchild. So I'm a little bit distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. But that's, that's celebration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Celebration of life. Mm -hmm. Miracles. Mm -hmm. Miraculous life. That's so exciting. So um, Hannah, bless you and may your recovery be quick. <laughs> um, we're excited for you. Anyway, um, we've been talking about prayer, and um, we ended last week on um, give us this day our daily bread, and now today we're moving into forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, because we're talking about the prayer mm -hmm. that we've been going through the prayer that when the disciples asked Jesus, you know, teach us to pray, mm -hmm. and he said, when you pray, Pray like this. So it's not a repetitious prayer that we pray. It's it, He was kind of giving us a guideline or an right. outline of how we pray. We give, you know, our Father, so we're acknowledging Him. And so we've been going through that whole um, teaching <laughs> that He brought to His disciples and obviously to us. And so now we're at the part where it is, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness is key. Mm -hmm. Because unforgiveness is like poison. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You drink it yourself, and it only harms yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. And so it is very important that we forgive ourselves, we forgive God, and we forgive others. And we were, we were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I was going to share a scripture of how it, if we don't forgive ourselves, or forgive others, it harms us. This is a very interesting scripture. In Matthew chapter 18, it talked about um, Jesus. Peter had, had asked Jesus, how many times do, we, do I need to forgive my brother? Seven times? And he said, no, 70 times seven. And he gave him, him an example of a king who came back to settle accounts with his slaves. And one had been brought with him who had a, brought him who had a huge amount. He owed a huge amount, and he said, I'm going to sell you, your wife and children, to pay for this. And the slave fell on his face and said, please have mercy on me. And he begged him, and I will pay you back. And so the king had mercy and released him. Well, this slave left and came across a slave that owed him money. And he demanded that slave pay him back, and the slave did the same thing he did fell on his face and said, forgive me, I, I will pay you back. But he wouldn't. And he threw him into jail, I believe, because, let's see. Wait, he threw him into prison until he could pay him back. So what happened is the other slaves went and told the king. And the king was so angry. He said, should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his lord, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed. So shall my heavenly Father also do to you if each one of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And I think this is, in my personal understanding, I think this is a rare instance. I don't think he does that if we're always, if we're not forgiving somebody, but there's key times when he does this, I, this happened to me when I was in a situation with a family member who I needed to forgive and I wasn't willing to forgive and God was dealing with me. So this exactly happened. He turned me over to the tormentors until I was willing to forgive this person. So I, he knew I needed that and it was key, not only for me, but for the family that I was involved with that I forgive this person. So it's so important. That's how the great links God goes to to make sure we forgive for, because it's for us. Yes. It wasn't just for the person I needed to forgive. doesn't even matter if that person 
knew I forgave them or was even repented. It was about my heart as the Lord, as his child, mm -hmm. forgiving and releasing some, something from somebody who I felt owed me a lot. And I did, and I was the one that received the freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he's a good father to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, you said you weren't willing to mm -hmm. forgive and mm -hmm. that's part of, we you know, we, if I had my phone, we kind of looked up the definition of forgiveness this morning and I probably lost it now in the pictures of babies. <laughs> 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 um, but it is, you know, forgiveness is a choice yes. and the definition says forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process. Yes by which one who may initially feel victimized undergoes a change in feelings and attitude regarding an offense. Another one says, um, forgiveness is a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person. And remember, the Lord says in his word, vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's between, when we forgive someone, God can still deal with them. It's yes. just not our job. To bring right. vengeance on a person mm -hmm. it's the lord's and he'll do a much better job of it anyway i'm sure he'll, he knows how to deal with their heart and so regardless and this is the key part of whether they actually deserve it or not or whether they've asked for it yes so it really has to be just a choice that we make um it doesn't mean we don't acknowledge we've been hurt and we you know we can bring all our hurt to the lord we can you know, we need to process through that and deal with it. But we do have to make that choice and mm -hmm. forgive. And it is a process. And sometimes it takes a while. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to keep throwing it. Someone once said it's like a yo-yo. Have you mm -hmm. heard that? And you keep throwing it out and sometimes it comes back at you. <laughs> and you got to throw it out. I forgive. And, you know, it's, it's a process. But Well, and, you know, important. when you said a choice, you know, God chose to send Jesus. Jesus chose to go to the cross mm -hmm. to, to forgive us, to set us free mm -hmm. so that we were restored to the, to the Lord. And he didn't. You know, it says, even if they haven't asked, mm -hmm. you know, that we can choose to forgive someone even if they haven't asked us. That's because right. he knew that really forgiveness is about what happens to us. We're like you, you were set free. When we choose to forgive someone, what goes with that the bitterness the resentment mm -hmm. you know everything the anger because if you're harboring unforgiveness mm -hmm. what attaches to it bitterness anger resentment and somehow you justify all of that until it just destroys you you know and even bitterness it says it sends out shoots and defiles many there you so go. if if we're being hindered mm -hmm. and in bondage to not only the unforgiveness but all the emotions attached to it it's not only him hurting us, but it's hurting those in our lives yeah. that we touch. But I think, you know, what struck me was when you said, even when they haven't asked, we didn't ask Jesus to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross because he loved us that much, mm -hmm. that he wanted to make a way for our freedom, mm -hmm. for eternal life and relationship with the Father. But then when we recognize that and choose to receive that forgiveness, mm -hmm. it's already been there. It's already there for us, done. He's mm -hmm. done it. Mm -hmm. So we just get to, you know, Reach grab hold of it. And, you know, and that's oftentimes I think about that when you've forgiven someone, you've chosen to forgive them and you walk out that forgiveness. And then maybe down the road, somebody recognizes I had that happen to me. I had someone call me up after 15 years of, of something that had taken place and they called me up and they said, you know, for the last two days I've been spending time with the Lord and he's, he insisted that I call you and ask you to forgive me. You know, and she just went on to why she was asking for me to forgive her. I had already done that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was okay, it was good, but, and I told her that, you know, that, so, what a beautiful thing that I was able to be fully free and fully able to love without that asking, but then the ask did come, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so I don't know. I just, that really struck me. Yeah. Well, too, and, and I think when we think of what God has done for us and forgiving us, you know, our debts, you know, we owed 
a debt. The you know the scriptures say for the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. and the you know Jesus took that debt and paid it for us. Yes. And so, mm -hmm. how can we require we require others to pay back a debt that they maybe owe us when mm -hmm. we haven't? been required to pay the debt we owe him. That's right, yes. And so I think that is why forgiveness is so important because God has forgiven us. He does not ask us to repay for what we've done. We sometimes suffer consequences for mm -hmm. the things we do on mm -hmm. this earth, but ultimately we have been given eternal life. Yes. And that is yes. a gift that we don't deserve. And so when, you know, we talked about forgiveness as a gift God gives us, then it's also a gift that we give others as well mm -hmm. that's it well and when you are able to receive a gift when we're able to receive mm -hmm. his forgiveness we've come to that place where we we humbly come before him and we are able to really accept and receive yeah. his forgiveness we're able to give that out because he now is mm -hmm. within us he who gave us that you know we now understand and acknowledge that we've been forgiven mm -hmm. and so we are able to give that out it's like our relationship with the Lord when when we love him and grow it in intimacy with him his love overflows from us well so does forgiveness mm -hmm. as we receive it we're able to give it out and so I think it starts there first receiving his forgiveness for our own lives mm -hmm. and then we're able to by his grace and mercy give out forgiveness yeah. it it's not about how we feel it mm -hmm. it's a choice like you said we mm -hmm. we may not feel like that person deserves it we may not feel like my anger's all gone and I can choose to forgive mm -hmm. this person but we can we can choose forgiveness just as we chose to receive it we can choose to give it and then God moves in that and we're able to come to that place of even feeling it mm -hmm. you have to um, get in touch with what God's done for us. You know, yes. Really, really know yes. what He's done. And this, God put this on my heart today. It's from Luke 7, <clears throat> um, 37. And uh, it's it says, In the neighborhood there was an immoral woman of the streets known to all of act of worship. And it, it says, um, down, uh, down farther, it says, in, It's a story about two men who were deeply in debt. One owed the, the bank a hundred uh, one hundred thousand dollars and the other owed ten thousand dollars but um, but she she said so that's that the other story but she said she has been forgiven of all her sins this is why she has shown such extravagant love but those who assume they have very little to be forgiven will love very little and then later on he says your faith is it, um, in me has has given you life mm -hmm. you know and um, notes from mm -hmm. that you know down in the notes I'm got the same Bible mm -hmm. <laughs> this is interesting because in that story it says Simon thought Jesus should have known the sinfulness of the woman but Simon should have known the <clears throat> should have known the love of the one next to him who was ready to forgive and restore mm -hmm. Religion focuses on the sinfulness of a person, but faith sees the glory of the one who forgives and heals. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I just think faith, when we have faith, we're believing in the one who offers the forgiveness. Therefore, mm -hmm. we are able to as well. That's why I'm always asking the Lord, Lord, help me to see with your eyes, mm -hmm. see the gold in that person. Help me see past the behavior or past the offense and let me see what you see. Yeah because then I'm seeing what he sees and I can forgive and I can heal, you know, and love. And we get, we get in touch with, with what he's done for us and who he is and how much he loves us. It's almost like we're willing to do anything, you know, to, to be close to him, to be with him, to not have that separation between us. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's important because some of those steps are difficult mm -hmm. yes. that in, in forgiveness. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, and I think, yeah, it's important that, as you said, it's this, it's, I think I read somewhere that forgiveness is kind of this circular process. You know, we receive it, we give it out, we keep receiving, we give it out, like you were mm -hmm. saying, and it is important. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is going on simultaneously. Yes. Because we know what we've been forgiven, 
we can forgive others like you know mary she had been forgiven of much and therefore she was able to love much mm -hmm. and that's another thing you know if the more we learn to forgive and to be forgiven the more we can love yes yeah, because right. we yes. understand forgiveness and we see that person the way the lord sees them so i think that is important and um, there's nothing hindering that love because when mm -hmm. you've forgiven and you've let the emotions go with it, then you're choosing to, okay, now I want to learn how to love. Yeah. And so forgiving is making way for the yeah. love. Like and then you you're said. not controlled by those emotions. You know, emotions yes. are very powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important in that definition where you're choosing to release negative emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important because then we're controlled not by those, but rather by the love of God that... Mm -hmm. You know, well, and I think that's why he said vengeance is mine, mm -hmm. because in our emotions, we can seek revenge mm -hmm. or we can seek to do not so nice things. Mm -hmm. So then we're just doing what others have yeah. done to us. So he's like, no, choose forgiveness and let vengeance be mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will deal with it. Yeah, we don't know that other person's heart either. And the right. Lord does. Yes. So, yeah, it's just better to forgive and mm -hmm. Forgive and forget, some people say, but even that, I think that, you know, we can still have boundaries mm -hmm. within forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to forget everything. Sometimes there are situations that are not safe to be with certain people, but that doesn't mean, you know, we can still harbor right. those feelings um, right. that are negative toward them. Uh, another thing, I think, that's why it's important, I think he asks us, you know, to ask for forgiveness and not just... You know, we talked about how reciting this prayer is not God's intention. It's more of a pattern. And so we don't want to just flippantly say, well, forgive me my sins. You know, I think it's important that we ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, examine in the Psalms, you know, examine my heart. Yep. Mm -hmm. See if there's any wicked way in me. Mm -hmm. You know, we're to ask that. And the Lord will show us. Yes. You know, Mary, you know, there's a, you know, you had a good point. We don't want to get stuck there. No, we don't no. want to constantly be looking at ourselves like we're so, you know, oh, mm -hmm. I'm so, woe is me, I'm so sinful. But it's on a day-to-day -day basis, it's okay to say, Lord, you know, where am I mm -hmm. lacking or what do I need to forgive, mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness for today and mm -hmm. keep that slate clean. What do you want me to see? Today? Yeah, what do you want me and to see? And he's faithful. And mm -hmm. he's, he, it's a process. He's not mm -hmm. going to reveal it all to us, no. you know. He knows when we're ready. Day one, he knows when we're ready. He knows when we'll be able to overcome mm -hmm. and, and walk it out. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it's, you know, where you react to in a situation. Again, we talk about emotions and, and something comes up and we react. And it's like, Lord, why did I react so strongly mm -hmm. to that yeah. person? What, what is it that, wow, you know? And to me, then I go to the Lord. Lord, why? Why did I react so strongly? What is what is hidden there, or is there unforgiveness, or is there something mm -hmm. that just erupted in me that I would have that kind of reaction? Mm -hmm. I think even in that asking, and then He's so good to show us in a way that we can we can really just repent and then move forward, knowing we're loved and forgiven. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's important because. Um, you know, when I was first saved, um, everything was was all fun and wonderful. But after a few years, I think, you know, I was established in the Word. I was trusting the Lord. And the Lord, you know, had told me ahead of time, He's warming up the water, you know, because I needed some cleansing in certain areas of my life that I wasn't aware. I thought it was part of my personality. But so we're not aware of some, some things that we need to let it go of. And I was remembering um, <clears throat> one time uh, I was uh, in Toronto at the big outpouring there and I was soaking, you know, during soaking time I was laying on the floor and I always had a victim mentality because of things people did with to me and you know I just would blame other people and it, it was a victim mentality. And yes, it was wrong with the, what people did but when I was soaking the Lord wanted to get specific you know, not just general, I forgive them all. You know, anybody who hurt me, I just forgive them. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to be specific. And this had to do with, um, it was healing, he was healing me about my father. Um, and it was, the outpouring was the father loves you. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, when I was processing, you know, God showed me that um, even though I was a victim in many ways, 
but part of the things that I did, I participated in my own defilement. And I had to repent of my part of the things that I did. And with, when, you, when you know the Lord loves you, it's not a huge deal. It's, a, it's like, oh, yeah, I did do that. And I repent of that, Lord, please forgive me. And then he showed me how I would had blamed my father because he wasn't there, you know, that if, if he was there, not, none of this stuff would have happened to me. And so I could go in another deeper level and forgiving my father, uh, my earthly father as well, because, you know, because, you know, it wasn't, you know, that part, it, I couldn't blame him anymore. I took responsibility for myself and then I just, I, I could forgive people more easily. So it was like, this is this example of being specific and, and how it's just like the Lord washes you with water when he brings something to your attention and you can just give it back to him and let go of those hurts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere too that forgiveness is kind of like taking a shower. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, you know, we're forgiven. When, we, when we're walking as Christians, we are forgiven. If we died today and hadn't thought to repent of a certain sin, we're still forgiven. Mm -hmm. But it is like taking a shower feels good. Mm -hmm. It's just refreshing to get the dirt off. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's kind of like it's for us. It, mm -hmm. it just takes such a burden, I think, mm -hmm. off when mm -hmm. you can forgive. Uh, another thing you talked about, um, you know, being specific. And I think for me, I, some people, I'm not a big, you know, a lot of people get sin as, you know, adultery or stealing or lying. They think of the big, the big sins or, you know, and a lot of us just don't do those things regularly. And so I think we might think, you know, oh, just, yeah, forgive me my sins because I know mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. But, but there's a lot, I, I tend to be more guilty of the sins of omission, which is not doing mm -hmm. something the Lord's asked me to do. And so I think it's, we have to ask for not only the forgiveness for the things we've done, but the things we haven't done. Mm -hmm. That may be the Lord. And sometimes I can just be so flippant with that stuff you know mm -hmm. for years the lord you know would ask me to get up early and spend time with them and pray and i was like oh you know i'm not a morning person like really. <laughs> and for years and he would just keep nudging me and i would read scripture and you know the the more mature we get the more he can kind of hold us up to a higher standard mm -hmm. you know yes. and finally he's like you know that's sin it's like i'm asking you to mm -hmm. do something and you're just you know, shrugging your shoulders and saying, no, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I've had to learn to really let mm -hmm. God go deep and find those little sins of omission, things that I haven't done that mm -hmm. he's wanted me to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the importance of this, you know, again, goes back to, well, why, why does that even matter? Because we want to go deeper with him. Mm -hmm. We want to know him and know his heart. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if it was you or somebody was talking to me the other day and they said, why, I think it was you, why would, um, why would we not want to know the very one that we're going to be spending eternity mm -hmm. with? Yes. There mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why God said I came to give mm -hmm. life and life abundantly. He wants relationship with us mm -hmm. now. For us to experience his heart and his abundance mm -hmm. of who he is now mm -hmm. with him and with each other as the church because it will be only an extension then when we mm -hmm. go to heaven. So it's why do we just put him on the shelf and then when we go to heaven expect to know him? Mm -hmm. It's like that just so that's why. Why do I want to be forgiven? Why do I want to repent when I mess up? Why do I want to go deeper with him? Because I want to know the God, mm -hmm. <laughs> my Father, mm -hmm. who I will spend eternity with. Mm -hmm. I want to know him now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yes, um, so I think, sometimes we don't know what to repent of. I, I was in a situation in my, <laughs> and I just did not want to go back to uh, my past at all. And I just refused. And I just would not surrender it. And I was miserable. I had, 
walked 15 miles a day uh, just to get rid of the energy that I was having and I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't I wasn't <laughs> sleeping I couldn't eat my goodness I don't recommend that for weight loss <laughs> it was horrible and finally I just okay I'm willing to talk about it <laughs> I give it up <laughs> and th but this was after like a whole summer three months I, I suffered with this and um, and that night the Lord gave me a dream and in this dream this was about forgiving my husband and I just sort of said oh I did that already done it not going back there and he wanted me to be specific about my part and um, and so um, so he gave me five specific things how my husband was hurt because I disrespected him in certain areas now to me I'm thinking oh well that's not that a big a deal you know how, how, why would somebody be hurt by that everyone does that but the yeah. Lord but the Lord showed me that these were the ways I disrespected him so from that I wrote them down it took me 10 minutes I wrote them down and then um, the next day or the day after I made an appointment with him to, to talk to him about it and he, you know he he's in recovery so he knew what a fourth step was and so he understood the process and and he came and he sat down with me and I read the whole thing that the Lord had given me, just practically verbatim. And he didn't argue with any of the points. They were all accurate. And But, but at the same time, there was such a healing that took place. Mm -hmm. I used to have such fear and anger, bitterness, hatred for this person. And and it God just broke it. And I'm thinking, who is this person sitting across the table from me? You know, it's, you know, even um, helped me save face by saying, you know, we were so young, how, how did we think we were going to do this, you know. It just was a miraculous encounter with God by me surrendering my, um, you know, my will to the Lord to, yes. to make this happen. And so we were able to parent our son together, you know, and, um, and, and still move on with life without fear and, and anger towards each other. So this was a pivotal mm -hmm. point of my forgiveness, but boy, I sure fought it. And mm -hmm. I really didn't even know what I was gonna forgive him for mm -hmm. or ask him to forgive me for, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and God just... But when you submitted and just said, okay, Lord, talk to me. Yeah. And he did he it. did, mm -hmm. and then you were yeah. set free. It's, yeah. it's such a key to, mm -hmm. to you know, and, and even that's a clue. Sometimes when you realize there's something going on with yep. me, you know, I'm just not, I'm angry all the time, or I'm down all the time. Lord, what is it? And mm -hmm. and he will show us. Yeah. And there's freedom in mm -hmm. forgiveness. And really, that's the foundation mm -hmm. of our walk with the mm -hmm. Lord, receiving his forgiveness mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. us and all that we have, we have done, that connection mm -hmm. to, you know, restoration. And then choosing to forgive others allows then, him to be seen in and through us. So forgiveness is so foundational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I've been learning over the years, that even when it seems like there's no way this person's deserving of forgiveness, there's mm -hmm. no way I'm going to forgive myself. I mean, a lot of people get stuck on they can't forgive themselves. That's right. Yeah. But they're only seeing mm -hmm. their, themselves and their sin from their perspective, mm -hmm. not from the Lord. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, so that's why we, again, we have to help others understand that God's love is unconditional mm -hmm. and he already did the work of forgiving you. Mm -hmm. You choose to receive it and he can bring the healing. Mm -hmm. And I bet you felt, you know, when we walk in unforgiveness, there's, it's, it kind of puts this barrier mm -hmm. between us and the Lord, between us and other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Forgiveness doesn't, unforgiveness, you know, I don't lose my relationship with God mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, walking in forgiveness, mm -hmm. but we lose fellowship. Mm -hmm. So yes. we're always his children, mm -hmm. but when we're walking in unforgiveness, sometimes it affects our fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to, you know, it's like a child when he's guilty and he knows he's guilty, you avoid your mom. <laughs> you avoid your dad because you know you're guilty. Mm -hmm. And I think we do the same thing with God when we're walking in unforgiveness, when we need to be asking him to forgive us or others, it puts a huge wall up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we tend to hide. Mm -hmm. We hide in our guilt. We hide in our shame. 
and we can't fulfill our destiny. You know, we talk about his kingdom coming, and that means that we're becoming everything he wants us to be for him on this earth. Mm -hmm. And we can't become that person when we're stuck mm -hmm. in, in unforgiveness. Yeah. You know, and that, that leads me to that mm -hmm. whole um, idea that many are taught that when Jesus was on the cross and he said, you know, Father, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many think that God the Father turned his back on Jesus because he couldn't look at him or look at sin. That's actually not truth because the whole rest of the Bible talks about our God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. He loves us. He's our refuge, our strong tower. He is always with us. So Father never looked away from Jesus, but because Jesus took on the whole sin of the world, it was the fellowship. He could he could no longer he couldn't receive. He couldn't from receive the from the Father. He had been mm -hmm. communion with his Father God that whole time. But then sin, when he took up sin upon himself, then no longer could he hear or see or or commune with the Father because mm -hmm. the sin was in the way. God the father was still right here. He was right with Jesus. He was probably old then, you know, but he was right there. He had never left him, and he certainly didn't turn his back on him. Mm -hmm. It was that the sin that Jesus took on kept him from the fellowship with his father that he had had. Mm -hmm. But that, again, was restored mm -hmm. when death was conquered. Mm -hmm. But I think that we have to get that. That's such a key, Bard that mm -hmm. our position as son and daughter does not change. When we've given our life to the Lord and received that forgiveness, we are a son, we are a daughter. We belong to him, and that won't change. Sin just keeps us from, it's like here's the father and we look this way and we're mm -hmm. looking at our sin and actively involved in our sin. Well, if you're actively involved in your sin, you can't be communing with the yeah. father at the same time. Or just, you know, I have a lot of really young grandchildren, and you do too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, when they're doing something wrong, they always hide. <laughs> they always go off and, you know, behind the chair with the M&Ms or, you know, so it does. It, it, we are removing ourselves from yes. his presence. Yes. We're, he's not He has in us. us. Yeah. Yep. So the, and, you know, one verse that's, very encouraging it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness yes. mm -hmm. so this is you know asking forgiveness is part of sanctification that process of being made righteous and mm -hmm. holy on a day-to-day -day basis yes that's good so I'll show you and finishing I have a few more verses or yes yes should we read them quickly on mm -hmm. forgiveness mm -hmm. um Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So again, it's that combination. We forgive because we've been we've forgiven. Been forgiven. Mm -hmm. And we need to be aware and of that you know forgiveness. What? It's not a if you... <laughs> It's do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's an, that's key too. It's a mm -hmm. command. It's a command. So there's another sin of omission mm -hmm. when we're not walking in forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I had a yeah. something deep that I had to walk walk out of, um, and part of this was just little steps to breaking me free from fear, which I was finally delivered from. But um, you know, I had to uh, th something that I had, you know put aside in my subconscious and really didn't address and the Lord brought it up <clears throat> that I needed to address this with uh, a family member and um, you know I didn't want to I just brought just great fear upon me just to even think about it but I knew you know I was trusting the Lord and he brought me walked me through this that I would so I wrote this um, family member a letter and I actually had to have somebody walk with me so I could put it in the mailbox. And that was just even an act of faith. Yes. And then, you know, a few days later, this uh, this person in my family called me because was willing to talk about it. And it, this was another interesting thing because um, the details 
I had about the situation. We're a little bit <laughs> foggy, but the person, but I was, I was, you know, I needed to address the situation, but um, just for myself, because I was feeling growing up, I had no voice. And so God was giving me my voice back that, I, you know, and so um, here the person actually didn't even acknowledge that they did what I was explaining. And they, they, um, they remembered it differently than what I did. But the more they were in their own denial, it didn't matter because I wanted my end to be clean. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so what, what I could do, I started becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. And then I wasn't really even, I wasn't trying to convince them or vindicate myself or do any of that. I, I knew what the Lord wanted me to do, even though they didn't really receive it. You know, they were, they said they were sorry that I felt that way kind of thing. But um, um, but I, I could for, forgive them and release it and let it go. And I just was clear in my mind what my boundary was and that I had a voice to speak up, speak, um, speak forth about it. And, you know, I do have a relationship with, with that person now. That, that, that forgiveness is, has, even though it wasn't complete on their end, that wasn't my job. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it, my job was to just to obey right. the Lord. And it was a yeah. huge thing to come against fear of doing this. And, um, you know, and eventually, like I said, I had a voice, I have a voice back and I, I could speak up for unrighteousness. And I also, also was free of fear eventually, you know, by taking these steps against fear. Mm -hmm. So God is just, is in the details. He is. And it doesn't matter if the person even receives it. You That's just, right. you still need to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know, God should put points in your heart and you're not gonna go digging up things, you know, from the past, you know, but, but as God brings it up, it's mm -hmm. so important that you release those things to him because there's life in that release of, of, yes. of all that fear and, and hatred. And, and you're also, he's able to move mm -hmm. because we haven't, we haven't, we've given all of that to him. So now he can move freely in bringing us healing yeah. and freedom, mm -hmm. but also in the situation, I believe that he can, he can move in a, in a mm -hmm. greater way because yeah. we haven't held on to it. Yeah. We've given it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really key mm -hmm. that if he's, if he's leading us, we are yeah. obedient and it's in the obedience that there's yeah. such freedom. Yeah. You so have a then, couple other? Well, yeah, but I was thinking how that kind of leads into the next part of the prayer, yep. which is lead us not into temptation. So don't, you know, help us not to continue to sin, but deliver us from the evil one. And the evil one, you know, often uses people mm -hmm. to hurt us. And so yes. now we're going into the future. So, you know, the last part we were asking for deliverance from past sin or forgiveness mm -hmm. from past sin and maybe current sin. Now we're going ahead and mm -hmm. saying, now help us not to go there anymore. Yes. You know, lead us not into temptation. Don't let, you know, because um, we're basically asking, yeah, you want me to read this one? Yeah, it goes this with one? that. Yep. Um, first of all, God doesn't tempt us. No. But we are tempted in our own flesh. It says in James 1 13, when tempted, mm -hmm. no one should say God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Because we live in a world full of temptations. Oh, basically, then mm -hmm. we're asking God to just kind of watch the road ahead of us. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like he's our GPS. You know, he might yes. say detour, you know, don't, don't go that way or don't do this, don't do that. Uh, in 1 John 2, 15, 16, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. So we're kind of asking him to deliver us from the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the mm -hmm. lust of the eyes. And he doesn't purposely tempt us, but the enemy does. Yes. Because it also says to be sober and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. So the Lord knows the enemy's after us. He knows he's out to tempt us. And so we're asking him to help us in mm -hmm. those areas. 
Well, and, and help us. You know, sometimes I'll mm -hmm. ask the Holy Spirit in the morning, I'll just be like, put a guard on my mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or an alarm. <laughs> you know, if I'm, you know, help me be aware. And, and that's a legitimate prayer. You say, yes, we're is. saying we recognize that I, my emotions can lead me into a stupid decision mm -hmm. or a stupid reaction, you know? So it's being aware that, Lord, I need you. Yeah. I need your help. I yeah. need mm -hmm. you to, but also along with asking mm -hmm. him to help us be aware of our actions and our thoughts, it's also, our part is also being, we need to guard our eye gates and our ear gates yes. and our mouth and mm -hmm. our heart. We need to be careful what we're watching, what we're listening That's to, right. yep. what we're reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, yeah, the enemy is going to come, come at us from all different angles. And what we watch or what we listen to can just sneak right in and then plant a thought or mm -hmm. plant an emotion that leads us to a really poor attitude mm -hmm. or poor belief system. So mm -hmm. all of that, it's asking him to help us be aware, God, what is not of you? Mm -hmm. Help me to help me to dis mm -hmm. discern, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm watching, when I'm listening, what I'm, you know, reading, that it is always feeding my spirit. It yeah. is always, you know, something that is pure and lovely and good and holy mm -hmm. and, and not going to lead me astray. So I, I just think that, yeah, he, I think God, Jesus was saying, Pray this, you know, mm -hmm. ask for help because I am your helper. Ask yes. for guidance because mm -hmm. I am your guide. Mm -hmm. Ask me because I won't lead you in temp temp temptation, but the enemy will try to. So I will help you and I will deliver mm -hmm. you, but choose me and ask of me. There used to be a saying years ago that was, you are what you eat. Remember that? Yeah. And it's basically <laughs> the same thing. You are what you watch. You are what you listen to. Mm -hmm. And you can, I love the analogy that I heard one time about, you know, you have an ocean liner in the middle of the ocean, and if the captain is steering even a quarter of an inch off of, yes. of yep. his, you know, goal that he's supposed to go to, within a day or two, he's way off course. And so that's why we need to depend on the Lord and ask his help, because we don't know. Something mm -hmm. can look good. It can smell good, it can mm -hmm. sound good, but it's not good. Mm -hmm. So we need to depend on him and ask him, and he'll always tell us. Mm -hmm. He will. Matthew 26 is a good verse too, uh, verses 40 and 41. It says, And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch for me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. So again, it's our flesh that is weak, and the Lord knows it, and we and need he's, help. And he's letting us know that <laughs> he knows it. reminding us, yeah. you, need, you need help. <laughs> See, again, you know, it's so mm -hmm. important, you know, that we realize that praying and spending time with the Lord is so necessary because we glean these truths mm -hmm. from the Word and from, from Him. And that... It, then we can, oh, yeah, God told me to watch for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, that, you know, speaks of that. Or, oh, this is God's character. And, you know, so, it, yeah, this is, yeah. his and word is so powerful. His promise to us then in First Corinthians ten thirteen is that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Mm -hmm. So either he leads us away from temptation or if we choose to put ourselves into that, he does provide a way of escape. Yes. So we're, it's a winning situation, mm -hmm. but we have to do our part and remember, you know, and beyond listening, it's about, you know, hearing from him, being in the word, asking him for mm -hmm. help. And yeah, wisdom. Absolutely. And then the last verse. The last part, which is in one version in the New Testament, not the other. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. So if you were Catholic, you may have left the bread from the other book. <laughs> Matt, Mark, or was it Matthew or Mark? Mm. One of Luke and Matthew, I think. One of them has that part and one doesn't. So this is basically the wrap-up. You know, we're back to magnifying God again. Mm -hmm. For thine is the kingdom. This is all you, God. This is all yours. 
um, you know, we're magnifying his name again. Yes. Um, it's your will that all this be done. This is your idea. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, give us faith to believe that you're going to answer. Um, you know, yours is the power. We're yeah. saying we know you're able. You know, we, we agree that you're able to do all this for us. Mm -hmm. And yours is the glory. And so when God answers our prayer, we know that the glory is all his. Absolutely. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. us forever and ever, which means... God's kingdom has no end, and the devil is never going to win. Victory is ours. And I, re I wish I remember the verse I read during the week, but I read a verse that was talking about how, how Jesus was saying that whenever he did what the Father was doing, whatever he mm -hmm. said what the Father was saying, he was glor the Father was being glorified through him. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in our relationship with the Lord, when mm -hmm. we are you know, living out as his hands and feet and his voice, who Jesus is on earth, he is glorified. So it's, and the glory forever be, it's his, you, your glory, it's your glory mm -hmm. that in us and through us is known. And that's his heart. He mm -hmm. wants relationship with us because he wants relationship with us and because in it he's glorified. Mm -hmm. I had a word this morning um, from the Lord about glory. Um, and the song that was going through my head this morning when I was waking up is God of miracles come we need you yes. <laughs> we do and the Lord yes. said my presence brings a miraculous yoke breaking anointing cultivate an atmosphere of my presence and watch breakthroughs increase revelation and restoration come with words of knowledge and wisdom I desire to increase all spiritual gifts in you to use for the edifying of my church the the glory of my manifest presence will be physically evident in this coming season. Recognize it and saturate yourself in it. I dispatch yoke-breaking angels today to free my sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Step into the brilliance of my glory. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, that word he gave you really is a segue into next week's panel yeah mm -hmm. talking about hearing hearing god mm -hmm. listening and listening hearing and hearing, hearing and recognizing key. his voice absolutely mm -hmm. that is that is key mm -hmm. and honestly again that's what prayer is it, it's it's doing life with jesus mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. communion with him mm -hmm. so we're, we're listening we're communing with him conversing with him you know, and so often I think, let's not overlook that, like our relationship with each other and how we converse with each other and are there for each other and pray for one another is how Jesus is with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's sitting right here at the table with us, <laughs> you know, conversing with us. So I just, I just love that, that he, what he really was teaching the disciples was when you pray, pray from relationship. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting, it was either this week or last week, when I was going through something rather difficult, and I thought, oh Lord, I need somebody to pray for me. He said, but Mary, I'm praying for you. And I thought, oh, you are. <laughs> it never occurred to me, you know, we just don't think about it, but that's scriptural. Mm -hmm. It says in Hebrews, he ever lives to make intercession for us. And I thought, wow, who else, who would be the best person to pray? For us mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and speaking of prayer we're going to just end with a little bit of prayer and um, again if you haven't put prayer in the um, prayer requests in the chat please do because we can also look at it later and pray for you because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we just take that seriously and mm -hmm. um, so just pray with us as we close and um, Yes, next week we'll be talking about listening and hearing the voice of God and how important it is. And sometimes there's hindrances to that. You know, sometimes obstacles get in the way of our prayers mm -hmm. or in our prayer life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, what gets in the way of us being able to spend time with the Lord and pray with Him? Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll talk about that. And 
um, also just practical ways in which we can really grab hold of the discipline of time with the Lord because mm -hmm. our lives are busy and mm -hmm. full but you know what how how do we know truly who he is and how to live out who he is in us unless we do spend time with him mm -hmm. so we'll we'll give some practical ways in which um, you can bring dis the discipline of prayer into your life and communing with the Lord into your life and that's a key word discipline mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and again that's something that Holy Spirit helps us with we're not alone in any mm -hmm. of this <laughs> you know mm -hmm. he delights in us so let's why don't we close in prayer I see our moderators mm -hmm. giving us a prayer request <laughs> oh okay um so we are praying for a friend of ours whose brother um, needs help. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I pray for this Me person. Too. His name is Mike. Mm -hmm. I lift him up and I thank you that he feels mm -hmm. safe where he is. He's glad where he mm -hmm. is and he is in a place where he is receiving Just help. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask you that Mike would open completely up in every way and receive everything yes. you have for him that we, he would take advantage of every opportunity mm -hmm. you have for him mm -hmm. that he would be vulnerable with you mm -hmm. that yes. he would open himself wide to you and receive mm -hmm. the healing and deliverance and restoration mm -hmm. that you have for him you want mm -hmm. to do a complete yes. work you don't want him to walk out have being three quarters of the way healed you want to mm -hmm. do it all you want to set him free so we ask you to do that. We ask you to work in his yes. heart and make him willing. Create in him a hunger for you. Yes. Create in him a desire to surrender to you no matter yes. what it looks like and no matter mm -hmm. what it costs. Yes. We ask you to have your way with him and glorify mm -hmm. your name. We ask you to hedge him about and protect him. We ask you to keep him away from the people that would be a bad influence mm -hmm. on him and draw him to those mm -hmm. who would be good for him. Yes. Shut the doors that need to yes. be shut. Open the doors that need to be open. You are wonderful, God, because you tailor make mm -hmm. the journey for each person. Mm -hmm. You have a plan and a purpose for each one, so we can trust you with Mike, and mm -hmm. we thank you in Jesus' mm -hmm. mighty name. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, for anyone watching, Lord, that you would manifest your presence in a tangible way in, in all of our lives, yes. Lord God, that we would recognize when you move and recognize when you speak, and Lord, that we would just step into your glory, step yes. into the brilliance of your glory, Lord, that we will not be afraid of the light, Lord, because mm -hmm. you are a gentle God, Lord God, and if there's areas that where we've gone off the, off the track a little bit, Lord, you are good to to show us and help us right. forgive and release those things. So we thank you today, yes. Lord God, that that for you, for yes. our relationship, Lord, that you make yourself known in Jesus name. In Jesus Amen. name. And I thank you, Lord, that that you know, sometimes when we begin to pursue something, Lord, it's not always easy or it's not always fun or <laughs> In, in our flesh, it's not always seeming to be productive. But Lord, I just thank you that as we seek you, we will find you. Mm -hmm. As we pursue you, Lord God, that you increase in us and we recognize the joy. And it, it, it comes to that place where we want to run after you, mm -hmm. Lord God. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are causing all of us, those watching and all of us, and your church, Lord God, to hunger and thirst after you in a way that we've not known before, that as we seek you, we will experience you in greater measure, Lord. And, and I, I thank you for that, because that is your promise to us, Lord. And Father, I just pray for anyone, Lord, who needs to walk in forgiveness, Father. Yes. I just pray that you pour out your mercy and grace on all those, on all of us, Lord, who need to forgive. Yes. And just um, help us to walk that out, Lord, day by day. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank and especially, God, I agree with that prayer, but especially, Lord God, cause us to be able to choose to forgive ourselves. Yes. Where we think we've done the un unthinkable or unforgivable, Lord God, we just ask that you would cause us to to surrender, to surrender to your yes. unconditional, mm -hmm. immeasurable love. 
and that as we do so and receive your forgiveness, Lord, we'll be able to extend it to others, yes. and especially to ourselves, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just bless you and bless our days. Bless that little baby you get to go see. <laughs> and we just we thank you for joining us, and we hope to see, well, we don't see you, but you see us. <laughs> you see us. <laughs> bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank <laughs> you.